Welcome back to The Morning Blend. Rachel Schakowsky was born with a rare disorder that causes problems in every joint of her body. She walks with crutches and spent most of her life wishing she was normal. Today, she's a full-time working mom with a toddler. She blogs about daily life, what it's like to manage her disability, and what she hopes to do for other moms. Rachel joins us now with more on her blog called My Leg Is Not Broken. You can find it on onmilwaukeemoms.com. Rachel, thanks so much for joining us. First of all, can you just, we know we were talking in the break, about how this affects you. Can you just talk a little bit about what it is and how it's affected your life? Sure, well, it's called arthrogryposis multiplex congenita. It's a mouthful, we call it AMC, and it's, um, your joints are abnormally fixed. So for, it affects everyone differently. For me, it affects all four limbs, and I was also born with club foot. Um, the, but my joints are bent, so um, like my hands won't go straight. Um, I had problems with my legs and my knees. Um, throughout my childhood, I had different surgeries to get things to the optimal placement, but when they do that, you lose um, muscle, and um, you're not as strong as you should be. I have this picture of you as a kid that the photograph is a little bit bent, but I think this, that you went through so many different surgeries mm -hmm. to try to correct the problems that you had in your arms and your legs. Uh, you spent a lot of time in a hospital bed, didn't you? I did. I did. Um, when I was um, three months was the first time that I went to the Shriners Hospital in Chicago. And I was there for 30 days doing a set of serial casting. So every couple of days they would soak off the cast, move my joints, and bend my hands a little bit more, and then put on another cast. Well, we have some of those casts in front of us here on the coffee table. I mean, they're so itty-bitty tiny. <laughs> and it's because you're a baby, and I know your mom has saved dozens of yeah. casts, right, that you had put on as a child. Yeah, we just dug out a big box of casts and braces and different things from my childhood. That's unbelievable. And I know you said you spent a lot of your probably childhood and teenage years wishing you were quote unquote normal. At what point did that change and did you start to reach out to others and realize, I know you said you actually feel blessed? Um, well, it all started when I was pregnant and I had a blog that was just to share with my family. And um, at the end of it, a girl wrote on my um, blog that she had been following my journey of uh, being pregnant and she had the same disability as me and she loved knowing just, you know, what it was like from my perspective because she wanted to have kids someday. And so that just kind of stuck in my mind and I always thought it would be neat to start another blog and see who I could find. So um, I started it up and um, started pushing it through Twitter and Facebook and all these people started reading it and I was meeting tons of girls who were in my shoes and um, it was just, it was really neat. It's so. probably not um, surprising that people with a disability like yours or moms with disabilities would read your blog. Have you been though surprised by how many um, moms have been interested in your blog who don't have a, a physical disability? Definitely. Um, it's been a mixture of moms who either have kids who have disabilities and they're, it's nice to just to see some hope of what their kids can do and what they will be and also just moms who can, um, I guess, commiserate with me. We all have struggles, we all have insecurities, and you know, as moms we, we stick together, so um, it's, been, uh, it's been pretty neat to see. Yeah. And I guess I have a two-year-old who's a challenge, and um, <laughs> it's no different for anyone else that has a two-year-old son or has toddlers. So. Yeah. What are some daily struggles that you and other moms who suffer from the same disability go through on a day-to-day -day basis? I think my biggest one for the first two years was being able to carry him is it's not easy to walk on right. crutches and carry your son. So it was depending a lot on others. I'm um, not being able to like leave the house without having to have somebody with you. Your sense mm -hmm. of freedom is pretty much eliminated. And I knew that going into it. So I, I knew there'd be a few years where I, I stayed home a lot, but so that was probably my biggest. And now, I mean, you have a toddler. I mean, keeping up with a toddler is hard for all of us. Um, <laughs> but especially if you're on crutches, because they get to be mobile, and you have a son. My, my son was a terror. He was everywhere. And I yeah. bet it's hard for you just to keep up with them. He is. I try. I don't go outside without uh, someone else with me, because I'm afraid he's going to run into the road or just, you know, hurt himself. Yeah. But um, so around the house, it's... It's safe, and I know he's going to be okay, but he's fast, and he knows it. So. Yeah, he knows he can outrun you, probably. Yeah, Definitely. He tries to take advantage of it. Definitely. You know, it's easy to focus on the struggles, but how has this experience of, being, experience of being a mother and not being alone, how has that empowered you? It's, well, it's been awesome just to see the other people who um, have shared you know, a similar walk as me, and I've also met people who have it even worse than I do, which made me realize how lucky I am. And I guess my one thing that I was afraid of is I never wanted to seem ungrateful because I know that it could be worse. I, everyone has different challenges. So um, 
my life is good. And I love what you wrote in one of your blogs. I printed it because you talked about, you know, welcome to my window in my often boring world, you wrote. Because <laughs> I think as moms, we all think our world is boring. You wrote, I'm pulling up the shade and letting you in. Maybe you'll laugh or think I'm nuts. Maybe you'll think I'm being ungrateful because you know someone who has it worse. I think of that and struggle with the fear of saying the wrong things. This is just my heart, my day-to-day -day banter, and deep down, I know I am very blessed. Yes, that sums it up in a nutshell. Isn't that beautiful? It, it just, it, how, you know, how did you uh, get to a point where you felt like you could share something? I mean, that's, I think, a lot of times what we think inside of our heads, but putting it out there for others to read must have been difficult. Oh, it's so hard. Um, there's days where I will write a post, and then I go to bed, and I lay in bed, and I'm like, oh, I should take this thing off. It's way too personal. <laughs> and I, I struggle with it. And then I wake up in the morning, and I'll have 30 emails of different people saying, like, oh, you made me cry, or oh, I love this. Thank you for saying that. That's exactly how I've been feeling. And you put it into words. And then I get excited and I go in and write another one. So that's pretty much been the cycle of how this blog has taken off. Is I feel dumb and then somebody else writes me something nice and then I write <laughs> another post. And then you're like, hey, it's working yeah. for somebody. I think that you're amazing. I love your blog. It's so down to earth. And the thing is, I mean, you're a full-time working mom. You're dealing with a lot of the same struggles that we all have as moms, yeah. but then you've got a few um, extra struggles, too, and I admire you and love your blog. Thank so you. So here's how people can um, read more about it in all of your posts and get on the bandwagon and read Rachel's <laughs> posts. Um, it's called My Leg is Not Broken, and if people go to MilwaukeeMoms.com, they will find blogs there under It's the Kitchen Table, I think is what all the blogs are called, Correct. right? Correct, yep. Yep, it's good stuff. Thank you so much for being here on the show. Thank it's you great for having to have me. You.